So after 10 weeks of talking about the devil's devices, we're talking about us a little bit and uh, something for us to be careful about. And it, it's a cousin to that series, but uh, a little bit different. I want to talk about don't lose because you won. Uh, don't lose because you won. Uh, Luke chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Then he called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and uh, to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the, uh, the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. This is uh, the start of their ministry. We see in verse 1 and 2. Go to chapter 10 now. He gave them power there. And that was, by the way, that was a 12, and now he's going to send out uh, 70, okay? And in chapter 10, and uh, we see here in, uh, in verse uh, 1, it says, After these things, the Lord appointed uh, other 70 also, and they went two by two before his face uh, into every city and place whither he himself would come. Uh, Therefore said he unto them, um, The harvest truly is great, and the labors are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Uh, go ye, uh, go, go your ways. Uh, behold, I send you forth as uh, lambs among wolves. And so you see the ministry here is beginning. Um, first the 12 and then the 70. And he says, look, there's a big harvest, but there's not very many laborers. Still true. Um, uh, still the same situation. And so they go out and they do the work and they, they're amazed and because they were given authority and power over demons and power to heal the sick and they were given these things, um, they went out and they did it, just like Jesus said, by faith and all the great things that God did. And whenever you live by faith, you always come back excited and amazed what God does. Down to verse 17. The seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Notice that. These devils, through Jesus' name, are under their authority. They're subject unto us through thy name. And notice the way they phrase that, and notice what it says there. And uh, he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice rather because your names are written in heaven. All right, let's pray. Lord, help us to uh, preach your word in truth and uh, cl- with clarity, Lord. And I pray that uh, we would, first of all, get the victory, and second, uh, not uh, be destroyed in our victory, Lord. I pray that the word of God would be powerful tonight, and uh, your Holy Spirit would move. And I pray that this church, who is a special church, on the front lines as any church is, and, and, uh, and in the battle, Lord, I pray that it would uh, continue in victory and become go even more to victory, Lord. We could do so much more and be so much better and more spirit-filled. And I pray that you'd put your hand upon us, Lord. And I pray tonight we get the wisdom we need to do these things um, that you speak of in your word. Please, Lord, help us. We, we need you, and I ask for your help personally. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, you see a lot of things here. Jesus' name gives us power over demons. And uh, we see... Uh, this, of course, in verse 17. And the seven returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And so it's pretty exciting. And God gives us uh, that power. And, uh, and thank God for that. And, uh, and, and they came back in victory. They're very excited about that. We see this again. We are told that the name of Jesus gives us authority over demons. In Mark chapter 16 and uh, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. And and continues on, if they take up serpents, they won't hurt them, and they, the poison and everything else. They're, they're protected. In my name they will cast out demons. Again, the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 says uh, God has given him a name which is above every name, that, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Um, and, and so through Jesus, we have power over demons, the name of Jesus. And that's a wonderful thing that we're going to need because we're facing that. We face it 
Five weeks ago, we faced it. This last week, uh, casting out several demons out of a, out of a lady who had demons, and, and, and some of you are part of that, and, and we will continue to see an increase of that. And thank God, it's not in our power. It's not up to us. Jesus' name gives us power over devils. But you would think when they came back and rejoiced about that, they said, Jesus, it actually happened. The demons were subject to us. It was amazing. And they returned with joy about that. That was the biggest thing they were excited about that. About. They didn't even talk about the, the healings or anything. They said, in thy name, we can cast out demons. They were pumped. And they returned with joy. And Jesus could have had a thousand reactions. Could have been, I told you. I told you so, or it could have been praise the Lord. It could have been, you know, that's wonderful. It could have been, I'm glad you did that. Uh, how many did you cast out? It could have been a thousand different things. But he says a statement that just seems like it's totally random, unrelated. And he says, and Jesus said unto them, verse 18, I beheld si- Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Just like lightning. And it's like, what? Oh, <laughs> what in the world? Where did that come from? Where, why did he say that? Right in the middle of that thing. And he said, you know, basically he says, yes, you, you threw me a cast out demons. And then he says that later. But he says, don't rejoice that demons are subject unto you. And it's a good thing. But rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. That is something much more important, and it's going to ground you a whole bunch more. Because, you know, even in this, even with these disciples, they had a, fa- a fail in here. And uh, in, in chapter 9, uh, verse, of course, chapter 9, verse 1, he gave them power over demons. But in verse 40, uh, 40 it says, I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And he says, you know, the, your name in the book of life is not going to change. When you receive Jesus, when you're born again, God writes your name in the, the, the reservation book of heaven. And your name is the Lamb Book of Life. Rejoice in that. Don't. Don't get so big on these demons are subject to you. Yes, the demons have to obey you, and yes, you have authority over the demons. I get that, but this reminds me. And Jesus has a, Jesus has a flashback to the fall when Lucifer fell from heaven. And he, and he sees it, and, and they come back, Jesus, even demons are subject to us. And he goes, oh, I watched Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Hey, don't rejoice in the same way that these demons are subject unto you. You need to rejoice and get your joy that your name's in the book of life. It's very important you understand that. It's good. I give you power, he says in verse 19, to do all these things. Yeah, I gave it to you. That's fine. And, and, and everything. But don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your name's in the book of life. And always your the basis, real important, the basis of everything in the Christian life, including your first joy, the foundation of your security of who you are, everything around your spiritual life revolves around a secure salvation. How often have to deal with the emotional problems of people saying, I don't think God loves me. Or I, don't th- I think God's left me. I think, I think that God, uh, God isn't with me anymore. God, I, I'm just having a terrible time, and I think God's not with me. And, and, and because they have never grasped and put their anchor in salvation, everything else, everything else, the blessings of God come and go. The feelings come and go. I mean, think everything in the world. This, the world is an unstable world, and everything comes and goes all the time. People come and go. Your spiritual leaders come and go. I mean, everything changes, and, and you better get anchored and, and because that, that makes you love God like you should. That makes you do your service like you should. Everything else can fall apart. God could have you set to be martyred and, and, and fail in your spiritual life. In your physical life, uh, uh, living in your life, and you might die. You might end up in a prison somewhere. You might do a ministry that doesn't succeed, and, and God just has one comfort for you, or zero, like Jeremiah. But when your security is in, God loved me while I was a sinner. He's forgiven me for all my sin. My name's in the book of life. When that is a foundation, everything else is bonus. Enjoy, enjoy it. It, it's, it's, it's good, enjoy it, but, but the foundation is salvation. And you're always out of kilter spiritually until you really anchor your soul in salvation. And he says, yeah, I gave you that power. It's good, but rejoice your name's written in the book of life. And, and, and he, he, it reminded him of the devil's fall when they came back and said, even the devils are subject unto us. And he says, 
I watched Satan fall from heaven. Don't do this. Now, why is that? Let me take you back to Ezekiel, because the Bible has two passages that really, really emphasize the fall of Lucifer and what happened to him. Ezekiel 28. <coughs> and so Jesus is saying, I, I watched Satan fall like lightning. So I want to look at the two passages that explain, as much as we're going to get until we get to heaven, what happened. Ezekiel 28 um, talks about this. And uh, a verse, uh, uh, let's start at verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation uh, upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, uh, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now God's going to give a description about the devil's fall here. And, and you're going to find out when it goes farther on, you're going to find out of this Satan. And you're going to talk about this. I think at this time, uh, Satan's seat was in Tyre which is probably uh, 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 Tyrus, and uh, that's where he was. And, 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 and I believe that's where he was at the time. And he's going to go and give a description of him. This was not a man. This was, this, is a, this was the devil. You'll see the description very specifically. But he's described before he fell. Okay? And, and that was part of how he fell. And, and I'll show this to you. Number one, it's, it says he's full of wisdom. It says in verse 12, it says, I'll say, in the middle of the verse, I'll say to the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom. Sealest up the sum means you're complete. Full of wisdom. Okay, this Lucifer was full of wisdom. Of course, he's more subtle. He's, every, the first thing he said about him is how clever he was. He, he was a, a special archangel. Number two, he's perfect in beauty, verse 12. It says, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. When you looked at the devil, when you looked at Satan, Lucifer he's called, you would look at him and you, you would just be stunned because he was the most beautiful creature ever created. He was perfect in beauty. Okay? Um, he was, and it, 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 it describes that a little bit. He was in the Garden of Eden, it says in verse 13. Uh, thou hast been in Eden, in the garden of God. Of course, there was only Adam, Eve, God, and Satan. There's no, nobody else there. It's one of the reasons we know that's who he's talking about here. Uh, thou hast been in, the, in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Next, his body was covered with jewels and gems. It names them. All these different, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and all these different things. His body was just covered. He's perfect in beauty, and his entire body was covered with beautiful jewels. He was so beautiful um, because he was, he was covered with all kinds of gems and jewels and so forth. Um, he was musical inside and out. He uh, specialized in music. Um, uh, in the middle of the verse, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and and the workmanship of thy uh, workmanship of thy tabret and of thy pipes was repaired in thee in the day thou was created. He was created with musical instruments in him. Okay, and 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 the devil is incredibly talented musically. And if you let him, he will give you music that will move your soul and you will love. Because he's very musical. Okay, and 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 they're they're, I believe, and I'm I can't prove this biblically. Just clues like this, okay. Um, we we really see three archangels mentioned. Gabriel, Gabriel's always bringing a message. Michael, Michael is always fighting, and we see Lucifer. And and in Lucifer, we know he's beautiful. We know he worship. We know he has music, okay. And, and, uh, and we know that he's going to have a special spot in the Garden of Eden with God. I think the archangels, one-third of the archangels fell. I think that Michael was over the warrior angels. I think that, um, that uh, Gabriel was over the messenger angels. I think that Lucifer was over the worshiping angels. And the worshiping angels fo followed him and, came and fell, and God made humans to be the worshipers now. Okay, that's my guess. Okay, um, I can't absolutely prove that, but that's just, there's a lot of things that, that make me think that, and, uh, and, and we see that. He was a certain kind of angel, and, uh, and it goes into that, but he had the music, and uh, he, he did those things. Uh, 
inside. By the way, when in heaven, you find it's the beast, which you find out the beasts in heaven uh, that are around the throne, uh, they wear crowns and they're redeemed from every nation, king, and tongue. The, the people singing in heaven are usually the people who were from earth, who were the humans before, and, and so forth. Just some, just some clues, but I can't prove it with the Bible, um, but uh, it's a pretty, a pretty solid guess about that. Um, he was musical, inside and out. Um, he was a covering cherubim, okay? And uh, verse 14, thou was the anointed, notice singularly, thou was the anointed cherub that covereth. You ever notice the other cherubims over the Ark of the Covenant and their wings cover? Okay, uh, Satan probably was a winged cherubim and he had wings and he was covering something uh, there in heaven or on earth. And, uh, and I'll give you what I think he, he was doing there. Um, but uh, he, he had uh, wings. Thou anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou wast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. He says, you were perfect. I mean, you were just the most amazing thing ever created until sin came, and then you're corrupted. Then he became a serpent, and sin always destroys, and we see that. Notice verse 17, why he fell. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast, thou, uh, hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, uh, that they may behold thee. Anybody want to tell me why he fell? What, what were the two things that he mentioned here? His beauty and what else? His wisdom, what else? Three things, really. His brightness. Those things that made him so amazing are the very things that made him fall. Okay, and as a key phrase we'll get back to in a minute. Let's go to Isaiah 14 and look at the other one. Because remember, we're tracing back why Jesus is saying, when they came back rejoicing, and Jesus says, you know, oh, man, I saw Satan fall from heaven. Isaiah 14, and uh, uh, the, the, we, we see the, the fall here also. And verse 12, how... Art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, thou son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou, and here's how, it's, here's how he fell. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like, uh, I, uh, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend Above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. And we see his fall here. Why did he fall here? We see several things. He says, I'm going to take, I'm going to ascend up to heaven. So he was not in heaven. Okay? Again, we got a little clue here. He has a throne. He says, I'm going to exalt my throne above the throne of God. So I'm, I'm down here. I'm going to ascend with my throne up there above the throne of God. I will be like the Most High. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and he says, I'm going to be put above all these things and be in this situation. And uh, uh, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I should be like the Most High. But he, he's brought down to hell. I think, okay, I'm conjecturing here again. Uh, what we know is he tried to exalt his throne above the throne of God. We know that he wanted to be like God. He said he will exalt his throne. He will be like the Most High. That's why he fell. He tried to take God's place and, and do that. But it talks about his throne. Okay, we find that, of course, the throne of Satan. We find uh, uh, the seat of Satan in Revelation and, and so forth. Um, my best guess is, and this is even less strong than he's over the, over the, uh, the, the worship in angels, um, but I think there's some reasons to believe this. I think that God put him on earth, and there was a throne, God's throne on earth, and Satan was the angel, the beautiful angel that sat above that throne covering God. Okay? Um, and, and, of course, the Holy of Holies has, over the mercy seat where God was dwelling, the angels covered over that. I think 
that that throne, he got tired of God having it. He said, it's my throne. And then he says, I'm going to exalt my throne, not here on earth. I should not be below you, God. I should be where you are. And he wanted to exalt that throne that he was meant to cover. He wanted to be his throne. And then he tried to exalt it and say, this is my throne. And you know what? I don't want to just be king on earth here. I want to be the king of heaven. He goes up. He, he tries to exalt his throne. And he's cast down in the, in, into the earth. And, uh, and, and, and he loses that. He's fallen now. And now he's a morphed, messed up creature. But... He had all these things. He still has the brightness. He still has his tabards. He still has the, the, the beauty. He still transformed into an angel of light. He has all these abilities and, and all these things. But he fell, if we look here in Isaiah 14, is simply because of pride. He wanted to be like the Most High. Notice the term I, because the middle letter of pride is I. The middle letter of sin is I. Okay? It's all about pride, because pride brings you down. Notice he says in verse, uh, look at verse 13. As for thou hast said in thine heart, I will exalt my throne. I, uh, or I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. I will ascend upon the heights of the clouds. I shall be like the most high. By the way, when someone is backsliding, they're going away from God. Uh, they sound off like, like Satan. I just want this, and I don't think anybody thinks that I am important enough, and I don't think you like me. I think you're preaching on me, and I just want to go do this because I deserve I, 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 I. Got an I problem. And, and you just start talking about I, I, I. Not God, not others. You're just me. And, and you can't be selfish and be a good Christian. And... And he fell, you know, we see for a couple reasons here. Number one, um, we see pride. And number two, we see in Ezekiel especially, let's go back to Ezekiel 28. I want to show you the, what God makes a real clear point here in his mistake. He was not content with the blessings that God gave him, which is the anointed cherub, a special singular angel. He wasn't happy with that with the blessings that God gave him, that was the most beautiful creation ever. But when you're not content, you're not content. It can happen to anything, anybody, anywhere. <clears throat> God made a statement in the middle of talking how beautiful he was. Verse 12 and 13 are, exa- are telling about how beautiful he was. He goes in verse 15, he says, you are perfect in your ways. But look in the middle of it all in verse 14. That was the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Notice that right in the middle of all the praise, God says, I made you this. I created you. I made you beautiful. I put you over that throne. I made you the anointed cherub that covereth. I gave you exalted things. I blessed you. I did great things for you. I gave you a great job. You were special. You had special rights and powers and situations. And you forgot that I put you there. And you wouldn't be content with it. And it became about you. It became about you. Not about the God who gave you that. His heart was lifted up because of what God had made him. Notice that his heart was lifted up, it says, because of what God had made him. In, in, uh, in verse 17, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. The very thing that God did for you, instead of thanking God and being humbled by it, you, you use it to ruin your life and became proud in what God had given to you and the blessings of God. Remember in verse 14, in our situation, it says, I have set thee so. Let's go back to our our, our text here in Luke chapter uh, 10. Because what the disciples just did gave Jesus a flashback to Lucifer falling. 
And in verse 17, it says the, 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 the 70 return uh, again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. Behold, I give you power. <laughs> Do you see anything familiar here? Notice, I set you so, Lucifer. He says, disciples, I've given you that power. And he said, even the demons are subject unto us. And he says, oh. <laughs> He says, you know what? Let's remember salvation. Because salvation is a little different. Salvation has nothing to do with you. And it'll keep you very humble if you remember you deserve hell. It keeps you very grounded. Let's go back to your salvation. Because when I use you and I give you power over demons, and all of a sudden here's this powerful demon, and you have authority, and it has to obey you, say, I'm pretty powerful. God says, Ooh. Humans and other creatures like angels, when I bless them and give them good things, they have the ability to go and say, goodness, I'm amazing. And forget who gave them that. And that makes you fall. And that makes you fall. I have set thee so. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power over all the enemy. Uh, and, and, and praise God for that. And nothing uh, shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding. And this rejoice not that the spirit is subject to you. Think about the thing that you didn't deserve anything. Think about your salvation. These blessings are awesome and they might make you proud because I am using you. And I don't want that to happen. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 is a good verse that might be getting in your mind if you struggle with pride. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. Who doesn't struggle with pride here? Am I trying to trick you? What do you think? Are you afraid to raise your hand? 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. And who maketh thee to differ from another? That's an interesting question. If you're smarter, if you're taller, if you're stronger, if you're more beautiful, who made that happen? You didn't sit there in a womb and say, I'm taking this DNA and I'm taking this DNA. You didn't do that. You didn't choose anything. If you're brilliant, understand it was a gift from God. If you have a great talent, a great gift, if you're super musical, and you say, man, these people who can't sing, I can't believe them. No, God gave me a gift. Thank you, Lord. It's for you. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Wow, that's a pretty strong statement. What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if you receive this thing, hey, you shouldn't boast in it. It's basically the rest of the verse. And you see that um, you understand, keep in mind that I have given you this, Satan. I have given you this, disciples. But they, even the demons are subject into us. <sighs> Man. He says, whoa, no, 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 let's not do this again. No, 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 no. You know, don't rejoice about that demon thing. I gave you power, and yeah, I gave you power to, uh, and, and you, when you're doing the Great Commission, you have power and protection. You have all those things, but I gave you that. You know what? Just get yourself grounded in your salvation. Those blessings are bonuses, and thank God for them. But don't start talking about I, and we have this power. You, you were given something, and I can take it right back. And you could lose it very quickly. The disciples were in danger because they forgot who gave it to them. They were in danger of being proud of the blessings, the very blessings that God gave them. And we have to be careful of this. We're a very special church and a very uh, anointed church and get, and get to do a lot of amazing things. And, and if the Lord tarries, we're really just beginning. And, and we're, we're seeing some victories and, and, and we get special truth and a lot of a lot of amazing things at open door and and we're the this the, the spiritual level is is increasing and we have to keep ourselves grounded as god gives us victory we're going to be going to more intense spiritual levels let me just show you some verses about this uh, first timothy 4 
Because you're blessed does not mean you should become proud. It actually means you should become more humble. Who am I that God should use me? And, and, and be humble in what God's given to you. And always stay grounded in you're just a sinner saved by grace. First Timothy chapter 4, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Very simply, as we get closer to the end, the latter times, okay, it's like way toward the end, okay, uh, there will be, uh, 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 Christians are going to start departing from the faith, okay, and that's going to start happening. Uh, the people that, you know, in school, the people who call themselves Christians, we're going to see less Christians and more departing from the faith, and that's just going to happen, and, and I got a call this week from somebody who said, my family member, they said, my family member just told me, their pastor told them that God understands and sin is okay. And this was not a, a wild, crazy church before, but it's changing. And, and, and what am I supposed to do when the pastor said sin is okay now? And th- this is a traditional Bible-believing church, okay? And, and this is going to happen, and then there'll be seducing spirits, uh, seducing people. And you better stay close to God because the devil's going to be seducing all of us. And it's going to have more power and more voice and seducing spirits as, it, as the, the new, the new uh, as the devil gets ready to take with the Antichrist his throne. There is going to be um, seducing spirits that will try to seduce all of us. And, and you've got and doctrines of devils and uh, speaking lies and hypocrisy uh, and uh, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'm just saying the spiritual level is going to increase. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're seeing that right now, of course, in spades as a church right now. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, and, and thank God he's given us a victory, and, uh, and, and we got to stay there. Um, and this, uh, ver- chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Verse 13, it says, yea, and all, uh, let me see. Um, yeah, they, all live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Verse 13, uh, shall suffer persecution, but uh, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We've got to get established in doctrine and prepare spiritually for the war to be intensified. But we know we have the power through God. So you're going to face some bigger things. But the cool thing is, is God has given us that authority. Okay, we read these verses. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Just a few verses we read earlier. I give you power to cast out demons. In my name, you have authority to do these things, he says. He says in Romans 8, 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Who is 1 John 5? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John 4, 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, Uh, Mark 16, in this verse, uh, you ought to get down and and know this verse because you're going to need it. Um, Because I'm telling you, you're going to run across these things. And, and, And we need that authority that God gives us. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They cast out devils. And that's an authority we have. In the name of Jesus. We have this name of Jesus that is above all names. That's powerful and can make it so we can cast out the demons. And God's given us that authority. And remember that. And and we're going to be able to do that. So the bigger devils... God also gives us more power, and God helps us overcome them, and you'll have some great victories. But the devil's going to come and say, wow, you are amazing. And he's going to try to get you to lose because you won. And make you get proud. We have the victory. 
1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, God's already overcome Satan. First Corinthians 15, verse 57, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But every time you see the reminder, through Jesus. Because it's not going to be your wit, your power, your strength, your, your ability to yell or scream or anything else. It's going to be the name of Jesus and the power of God and God anointing you to do his work and God giving you a gift and God working through you. All these things are going to be from God. And when God does that, you will feel so blessed and see the power of God moving. You'll be amazed at what God can use you to do. And then when you get there, you have two choices of saying, whoa, I'm awesome. Or I can't believe God used me. And you really need to pick the second. Because Jesus, when the disciples came back, said, whoa, 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 guys, no, wait a minute. You guys are saying, even the demons are subject to us in, our, in your name. He says, I don't like the way you said that. You kind of sounded like you thought you, you're pretty powerful. And those demons will tear you up without me. And I want you to remember, because this is going to make you fall. This is what Satan did. Satan was given a gift, and he was given blessings and gifts and beauty and all kinds of incredible things and, and, and put in an incredible place. I mean, an incredible blessings of nobody, no other creature had the blessings he had, and yet he was brought down by the blessing. <clears throat> and that's what happens to humans. You ever notice how often... These mega ministries, the head guy falls really hard. And so often in those ministries, everybody's exalting that guy. He's so amazing. What a great leader. He's so what? And pretty soon that guy's just like Satan. Kaboom. Because he believed his own press releases. And... Always remember everything you have. Every, what do you have that wasn't given to you? Your intelligence, your life, your health, your spirituality, anything you have, God gave you. James 1, every good gift and every perfect gift coming from above from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variable in the shadow of turning. James 1, 17, I think. And, and so uh, that, that, that is everything is from God. And keep giving him the glory. And stay grounded and just be founded as I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Wow, God used me. When Paul talked about God using him, he said, God used me more than any of the apostles. Then he said, though I be nothing. That's what he said. So stay grounded. And uh, remember who it is. And let's go get the victories. Let's go be more than conquerors. Okay? Uh, I, I am not going to live in fear as we get toward the end, which we're going toward. And as there's more seducing spirits, there's more of that out there. Because we know who God, who wins in the end. And greater is he that is in us. And if you're born again, you have the God of the universe inside of you. Okay? You're okay. And I, I, be spiritual. You're going to need to walk with God and be real. But I'm saying, get the victory and, and claim it through Jesus. And memorize those verses about the power of God. And go forth. But then, whenever God gives a victory, because we're going to get some great victories, let's stay humble. Let's stay grounded. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to preach your word tonight. I pray that we would not uh, get defeat and victory. And I pray that, uh, Lord, when you, uh, when you use us, Lord, I pray that we'd remember it's you who used us and we're nothing. I pray that we'd always remember everything we have, every, everything in our life is a gift from you. And, Lord, help us to give you the glory. Thank you, Lord, for the chance to be here tonight. Lord, we are in a battle right now like we've never been in before, Lord. And uh, we are front and center. This church is, Lord. I've never seen it like it is now. And, uh, Lord, I've seen this spiritual battle my whole Christian life, but never like now. And I pray that we would uh, gird up the loins and uh, get ready to fight and get the victory. And then we would be amazed and give you the glory. I pray that our salvation would be our, our anchor and, and everything you use us to do would just be a, a reason to praise you and help us never to fall like Satan, Lord. It's so hard to remember that he was a good angel, a good archangel. 
and yet uh, he fell, Lord, and it can happen to us, so help us, because he's going to push for that. And help us, when you use us, to just give you the glory, and never get haughty, and always remember, you're the one who put us there. You're the one who gave us the blessing. And uh, Lord, you're the one who gives us the victory. Help us remember these things, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, our heads are bowed.